So, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Um, tja, my name is Klaus, and um, yeah, today I want to talk a little bit about making strategy happen with flight levels. So there's two things in this talk. One part is about strategy, and then there's also a, a little bit about flight levels. So what is flight levels? Just uh, so that we have a common understanding about it, okay? So making strategy happen with flight levels, let's start with flight levels, okay? What is flight levels? Well, I try to explain why companies are using flight levels uh, in a book. It's called Rethinking Agile. And the book is basically about a story, a story about an organization. They wanted to become agile. And um, yeah, they invested a ton of money, a shipload of money. And uh, they trained um, agile teams. They did a whole uh, transformation, reorganization, and everything. And in the end, it turns out their performance was worse. So um, money not that much, uh, not that well spent, actually. And well, uh, we in the book, I somehow explain what we did, what we've done in this situation uh, to overcome this situation. And yeah, we activated this organization by using flight levels. Um, what is flight levels now? Well, I would say flight levels is an activator, an activator for your organization. I think we don't need costly retransformations, uh, reorganizations, and all these kind of things. Um, I think everything is there in an organization uh, if you want to become agile. You just need to activate it with a lightweight approach. And that's, that's exactly what uh, flight levels is about. Um, so flight levels is actually about two things. One thing is you're activating uh, organization-wide collaboration, organization-wide collaboration, that's important. And we do it most of the time without any reorganization, right? It's just like use what's already there. And the second part is we activate strategy and we activate delivery. There's a new book coming out with the title flight levels. If you're good in German, you can read it <laughs> already in two weeks or so. Uh, otherwise, you need to wait until August-ish or so. We're working on an English translation and um, yeah, it will be published uh, chapter by chapter. What a strange idea, right? <laughs> um, okay, so um, this is somehow what flight levels is, but what are organizations doing when they are working with flight levels? Well, in the end, it's about incorporating five activities um, uh, on, on three different levels. These five activities are companies are visualizing the situation. We know knowledge work is invisible, so when we are dreaming of doing some improvements, it makes a lot of sense to see actually what's going on. We don't want to fly blind, so we um, yeah, make the situation visible. We create focus when you are using flight levels in your organization. Creating focus is about shifting, shifting the behavior from a starting behavior to a finishing behavior. Which makes sense, because starting work costs money, finishing work brings money. And we want to earn money in the end, right? Create focus. What else? We're establishing agile interactions. This means we make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. Uh, improvement is only done by human beings. You can build boards and, and use methods and everything, but human beings need to be connected. And that's uh, number three, uh, establish actual interactions. Make sure the right people talk about the right stuff at the, at the right time. We measure progress when we are doing flight levels. Measuring progress means, I, I think there's not a lack of metrics in the agile community. I think there's actually too much measurements going on. So when we are talking about measure progress, we mean that's a feedback loop. We want to achieve something and we want to see how we're making progress towards um, our goal. So that's what we mean when we say uh, measure progress. And companies improve. This means you're never ever done. In flight levels land, we have the saying of the current state is the latest state of misunderstanding. This is how we think that the world uh, works, but it will change for sure. So we need to continuously adapt and reiterate um, yeah, these five steps. So this is actually the five activities. And these five activities are applied on three flight levels. So let's quickly talk about the three flight levels. The thing is you don't do these uh, five activities somewhere isolated in your uh, organization. 
You do it on different flight levels. Flight level number one is the operational level. Teams who are doing the operational work. These teams, they are incorporating these five activities in their daily work, right? Most of the time an organization has more than only one team. So what a surprise, we will see multiple flight level one systems uh, in our organization. Again, most of the time, one team alone cannot deliver value to the market. Multiple teams need to coordinate in order to deliver value to the market. So if we want to uh, do this, we need to fly a little bit higher. We need to fly on flight level two, and flight level two is the coordination level. On flight level two, we make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time, right? So this is the world of your products and services and all these things that make your customers happy, yeah? Um, usually an organization has more than only one team, or uh, sorry, more than one product or service, so we will see multiple flight level two systems uh, popping up in our organization. And again, on flight level two, we are applying these five activities. That's what we are doing, right? And uh, sometimes it's even the case that we have dependencies between the products and services. So if we change something in this product, we need to change something over here and over there. That's again something we can solve on flight level two. So we build just another level within the flight level two where we coordinate dependencies between uh, products and services. Sometimes, actually most often, it also makes sense uh, to think where are we actually flying to? And uh, this is the strategy level. This is like flight level three. In flight level three, we are um, aligning the work in the organization to um, yeah, the strategy and we make strategy happen. So these are uh, the three flight levels in the end. There are some, we can talk a lot about this, but there are some, let's say two common misunderstandings when people see this picture. One is, Great, this is our org chart. We can easily, <laughs> we can easily map our org chart to these uh, flight levels. That's not the case. If you think uh, you can map your org chart to this, um, to this poster here, please come to our booth and let's have a conversation. <laughs> um, that's the first thing. And uh, the second thing is it doesn't have anything to do with hierarchies. You don't need any uh, company structure at all if you want to implement flight levels. If there is an organizational structure, of course, we can use it, but we don't need it. Yeah? Um, so these are the two uh, main misunderstandings when people see these uh, pictures. Today, I want to focus on flight level three. I want to zoom into flight level three, and uh, yeah, I would like to share some experience and thoughts um, how organizations are using uh, the flight level three. So the rest is not part of this talk. Are you ready for flight level three now? Let's fly high, right? <laughs> All right, so flight level three. Um, why would it make sense to think about uh, flight level three? So flight level three is all about strategy and delivering strategy. And um, this is sometimes done a little bit strange in organizations. Let's draw a timeline, okay? Timelines are always good. So um, what's going on in many organizations? In many organizations, people are working on stuff, which is great because that's the reason why they get the paycheck, right? Then there is this event where the strategy is announced. Do you know these kind of events? Yeah? Maybe with fried and liver, have you, have, you, have, have you ever had fried ant liver? Yeah? <laughs> exactly, yeah. A big barbecue party and so on, um, or just like an unromantic email, yeah? Um, whatever it is, but this is our strategy, okay? And this triggers the behavior that people continue to work on the stuff that they have worked before, right? <laughs> Up to this point in time where the end of year sign is coming in. So the end of year is coming uh, near, and then some people remember, oh, there was this strategy kind of thing. So uh, this triggers the behavior of uh, PowerPoint presentations being um, like <laughs> generated, strategyfulfillment.ppt or something like this. And then people start to map what they have done to the strategy. It's like, okay, we've worked on this project. Yeah, this fits into this strategic direction. We've worked on this project. Yeah, digitalization, perfect, right? <laughs> so um, we're doing a kind
kind of backward mapping. We're, we're using the strategy as a justification instrument uh, of what we have done. But that's not the point of, uh, of strategy, right? The idea is that strategy should like, yeah, tell us what to do, right? So we need to get in a forward loop. Um, when I think about strategy delivery, then it's about, okay, an organization has something like long-term business goals, business outcomes they want to achieve. Then we derive a strategy out of these business outcomes, how we want to achieve them. Then we define some, let's say, mid-term or short-term outcomes that tell us, are we on the right uh, track? Then we uh, derive a coherent set of actions. We call these flight items, uh, how to get there. And then we measure and we learn. And when we measure and learn, this means we need to adapt, right? Strategy is about the future. And when there's one thing that we don't know, then it's the future. So especially on flight level three, we need to be able to um, adapt. And if we want to get in a forward loop like this, it's very important that we break free from PowerPoint. <laughs> strategy is not PowerPoint. The thing is, we need to make strategy delivery explicit. And making strategy delivery explicit could work like this. This is a flight level three system. And uh, it's important to note, this is an example, okay? Uh, a company that is doing some drone stuff is using a board like this. Your board looks different, right? But nevertheless, I'm sharing this as an example um, so that we see, okay, how could it look like? So this is um, a flight level uh, three system, what we see here. And uh, the very first thing when it comes to flight level three is what we are doing is we are making strategy and delivery explicit. Okay, so let's take a look at some parts of the flight level three system. One thing is when we're saying, okay, we are um, yeah, making strategy and delivery explicit. It's important that we are uniting two separate worlds. Because in many organizations, it's like this. We have one world, which is like the strategy world, and we have the delivery world. In the strategy world, we see people doing Hoshin, Kanri, SWOT analysis, I don't know, scenario planning, OKRs, KPIs. We're doing great things, yeah? Then we have the delivery world. In the delivery, in the delivery world, organizations are doing something like Scrum and Kanban and, I don't know, safe and less and more and all these kind of uh, delivery frameworks, right? Um, but the problem is that, uh, yeah, these two wor worlds, they are somehow separated. They are not connected, yeah? And uh, that's exactly what we want to achieve with the Flight Level 3 system. And I can show you how this is connected here on this board. If we take a look on the left, on your right side uh, of the board, uh, that's the delivery part of the board, yeah? I will zoom in uh, in some seconds. And the rest is the strategy part. The point is both is on one board visible and it's connected. Yeah? So let's zoom into the uh, realization part. The realization part could be a camping board, for instance. Yeah? Or, like in this case, a very, very high level flow of work. And high level is like, okay, we have some projects which are still on ground. We have stuff that's in flight. We have stuff that we can already demo and stuff that's being done, yeah? So this is just like the projects, the initiatives, the epics, things that people are working on. Does it make sense? Yeah? And this is flight level three. We don't care about delivery on this level. We just know these are the parts that need to be delivered. But the thing is we connect this with, for instance, a flight level two system. So we can take these cards and put them on a flight level two system, a copy of these parts. Now we are on flight level two and flight level two is all about cross team delivery. We need multiple teams in order to deliver these uh, things. So here in this case, uh, roughly 370 people are coordinating around this board and they try to make this stuff happen, right? But it's being pulled in from the flight level three. Yeah. So this was one connection you have seen. This was a connection of a flight level three system uh, with the flight level two system. You have many ways of uh, connecting these uh, systems. You can connect flight level three systems together. You can connect flight level three directly with flight level one, whatever. 
Yeah, there is many ways of connecting this. The point is you need to connect your uh, strategic topics uh, to your uh, delivery organization. And you can do it on a flight level three. So a flight level three makes strategy and delivery explicit and we are linking strategy and uh, delivery together. Um, yeah, and I think it's important that we're linking it together because there is this strategy delivery gap. What is a strategy delivery gap? Well, um, there is a strategy paper in many organizations, right? Which somehow describes who we are, uh, yeah, uh, what, what do we want to be, uh, how, where do we see us in five years and something like this, and a way how to get there. And then we see people working on tasks in organizations, maybe stories, something like this. So uh, in the strategy paper, we are dreaming of uh, in five years this and this will happen and uh, yeah, people are working on in sprints. So that's a huge gap in between, right? And uh, this gap has some problems because what I see so often is that people from uh, yeah, the strategy world are like, okay, in two years we want to uh, dominate the Asian market. We will be the leaders in the Asian market. And if people from the delivery organization hear this, they are like, you guys are nuts. <laughs> it even doesn't work in our market. It will never ever work uh, like in, in the Asian market. They have all these uh, funny letters and so, right? So uh, th th there's a complete gap in between. But we also see uh, the different, uh, or the other side, that some people from the, delivery or the, from the delivery organization are like, okay, what shall we work on in the next two weeks, in the next four weeks or something like this? Help us prioritize. And they are like, well, I don't know what you're up for in the next two weeks, but in two years, you know, <laughs> we will dominate the Asian market. So, um, yeah, that's the problem, right? And we can overcome this uh, by um, taking the strategy paper and derive long-term outcomes of it. Then we derive mid-term outcomes, short-term outcomes, and then we can connect to like the, the delivery tasks. And the thing is, we don't do this in PowerPoint or something like this. We make it explicit on our Flight Level 3 system. So it's all part of our Flight Level 3 board. And how do we make it explicit? This is these uh, three boxes. In this example, please remember, this is an example, right? Um, yeah, let's zoom in. So they have like short-term uh, outcomes, which are less than three months, so they achieve the outcome in lef less than three months, uh, less than a year, and long-term outcomes, I guess it's three years in, in their use case. And we see the outcomes uh, on, this, uh, on this area of the board. And outcomes, they don't flow like a river. Outcomes, they fly like a helicopter. This means um, there is not like this simple left to right movement, um, we have access here. We have, for instance, the progress access. We are making progress with our outcomes. We are gaining in, uh, confidence or we are, uh, we are losing confidence that we are achieving these outcomes. So we need movements in all directions of these uh, outcomes because we want to have real-time information. How likely is it that we are like, uh, achieving the outcome and what's the progress what we are making? So we need to yeah, explore the two-dimensional phase and not only uh, left to right on a flight level three system. And again, we make it explicit on the board. That's the important thing. So, that's uh, the third part when it comes to flight level three. We incorporate various time frames. And again, everything is explicit on the board. Um, yeah, when we talk about these outcomes and so, it also makes sense to provide context. Um, what does this mean? What I see quite often is we have a midterm outcome. Yeah, for instance, I don't know, until the end of the year, uh, we want to have uh, 20 reference customers for our new product. Sounds good, right? But why 20 and not 17 or 5,000, right? So uh, give, me, give me some reason, give me, give me context, give me meaning <laughs> what, what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so the idea is we, we need to provide context to those people who are working with the Flight Level 3 system. And context is not your 300 pages uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, which is the strategy. Yeah? So 
I mean, we can talk about these strategy papers as well. <laughs> it's, it's sometimes really quite interesting to see. So 300 pages describe, we are a bank. We want to make more profit. Um, <laughs> that's maybe a, a, a nice wish, but not a strategy. But that's uh, a different conversation, OK? So but the thing is, we, we, we need to make the essence of these um, yeah, strategic information visible on our Flight Level 3 system, and we can do it. We have it up uh, on the board again. Yeah? So we have context information. We have context information, for instance, about uh, the outcome, which really somehow r there is a reasoning behind it, why we want to achieve a certain outcome or not. Right? We have context information about uh, our, our business in general, about our, uh, our company. Like, for instance, that's why we are here. Uh, this is the things that we are doing. And even more important, these are the things we are not doing. So we built some guardrails. Yeah? And everything is explicit on the board. Uh, we have textual information, but it's not limited to textual information. Use any tools that you are using in your uh, strategic work, like Wardley Maps, come up with a business model canvas, I don't know, scenario plan, whatever uh, provides context so that those people who are uh, working with the board understand uh, what's, yeah, what we need, put it on the board. And charts, measurements. And when it comes to measurements, um, I think we, we can do a, a session only about uh, metrics and measurements on flight level three. The point is, we want to see business measurements and business metrics. I'm totally not interested in lead time, throughput, velocity, or something like this on a flight level three. This is delivery metrics. That's highly important on flight level two, and that's highly important on flight level one. But on flight level three, I want to talk about business. I want to see the, 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 I don't know, sales figures. I want to see uh, page visits. I, I don't know, all these relevant business information. That's uh, what we care of. And that's also uh, something for tool providers. We need to build, uh, yeah, like interfaces where we can connect uh, Microsoft Power BI or where we, where we connect uh, Looker or stuff like this. That's what we want to see on a flight level three. Flight level three is about business, and we need to make the business visible here. So um, yeah, and this is all the stuff that um, we are um, visualizing on the flight level three. So we explain the context. It's not about work tasks and stuff like this. It's about the entire thing that we are uh, doing in the end. Another thing, which is actually quite important on uh, flight level three, we need to keep the eyes open when new opportunities and ideas pop up. And many organizations uh, visualize this also on uh, the Flight Level 3 board, like this organization is doing. They have a box up there. And this is um, not just a box like a dumpster where uh, you yeah, put all your, I don't know, ideas uh, in there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a two-dimensional thing. So what are opportunities? Opportunities could be, OK, we can acquire one of our competitors. Perfect. Or we have a great idea to sell a new product. Yeah, these are all opportunities and ideas. We put them on the board, and then we bring them into a two-dimensional space. One axis could be, for instance, how good are we understanding this idea, yeah, this opportunity? Do we have a common understanding what this means? Is there a business case behind it? So it's really about understanding actually what's going on. And the second axis is mm, talking about time frames. You see, this is somehow connected even to uh, the outcomes here. So we have a now part, which is somehow connected to the delivery part. We have a soon, which is to the short term outcomes and so on. And we have a later and later rare, <laughs> even later rare part. And, um, Especially the x-axis is very important. I've seen it so often in companies that someone comes up with a great idea, and this idea is being attacked. But it's not being attacked because it's a stupid idea. It's being attacked because we have different time frames uh, in our mind. Uh, maybe the guy who's coming up with uh, the idea thinks, OK, we can start working on this uh, somewhere next year. And others think, you are nuts. You want to start with this now. This doesn't make any sense. So if we make this explicit, we, we manage our timely expectations, this somehow uh, releases a lot of stress of these conversations um, on flight level three. So that's uh, 
Another thing, so we continuously refine ideas and opportunities on the Flight Level 3 system. So, um, if we take a look at the whole picture now, yeah, so let's zoom out again. This is a Flight Level 3 system, and what we can see on this Flight Level 3 system is we can see outcomes, O-like outcomes. We can see coherent actions, what we call flight items, and we can see stories. And that's what we call SOFI. SOFI is the strategic interface of flight levels. And the idea behind SOFI is that you don't have to stop your strategy work like you are doing it. The idea is that you take your strategic artifacts, you map it to SOFI, then you are in flight levels land, and flight levels tells you what you need to improve in your strategy. So that's the idea behind it. And you can map it in four easy steps. You make your flight items visible on a Flight Level 3 board. You visualize your long-term, mid-term, and short-term outcomes. Then you connect your outcomes with the actions, what we call flight items, and provide context uh, information about uh, everything with stories. And that's basically it. That's the magic behind Flight Level 3 systems. If you want to uh, yeah, talk about this more, we are down at the booth. And yeah, if you want to win flight level training, take a picture now of this QR code and maybe you win a flight level training. That's it. Thank you.